What's up guys, my name is Vince and today I want to share with you about my journey so far. So back in 2020 I was a cabinet maker and I was doing that for about a year. Uh, there were parts that I enjoyed, you know, working with your hands and seeing your work when it's done. That was encouraging, um, but I wasn't really content there. And I stuck it out even though there were some really hard days. Uh, I wasn't a very good cabinet maker. I wanted to get into cybersecurity. You know, I, I love YouTube. I love watching YouTube. I would watch people like John Hammond. Uh, Josh Matacor is an awesome YouTuber, not as well known, um, but really quality content. Um, David Bombal. There's so many uh, inspiring YouTubers that I would watch. And I would specifically like to watch their videos about how to get into cybersecurity because it, it caught my attention and I really wanted to know how do I transition from a totally unrelated trade um, into something that's you know very technical and seems to have a really high requirements for skill and experience. And so I started to take some of the practical steps that they list in their videos and I'll include some of the more helpful videos that I found uh, down in the description so you guys can watch those. Um, and it was, you know, all kinds of things that you can do. Um, the most practical step that I believe that I took was getting my first certification. So back in August of 2021, uh, which is almost a year ago now, I finished my CompTIA A+. And that was probably the easiest certification that I'll ever get, uh, just because for the hardware section, a lot of it, if you've messed around with computers, if you've ever built your own computer, a lot of that will be more like review than learning new material. Um, so I was able to get my A+. I believe I studied for maybe four months or five months in total um, because it's a two-part test. And as soon as, actually even before I got my A+, I was already putting out um, applications. And I had done some home lab stuff as well. I have a lot of experience in a lot of different jobs, but never IT. And so, you know, I was like, is this possible? Can I do this? And I went for it and I applied to, I believe, over 50, 50 job postings um, and I was just applying constantly. Probably a nightmare for some HR people because even if I was a little underqualified, I would still apply, you know, just, just in case. Um, if I was vastly underqualified, I, you know, I try not to waste people's time. Uh, but there was a company that took interest. Um, actually, there was a couple. So, you know. Entry level help desk, that's all I was looking for. I, I was searching help desk on every you know website that I thought was was worth the time. And I had accepted one job and then I got another offer that you know looked more suitable. So, you know, I tried to be professional and decline the, the previous job and I took the second one. And I've been doing that for nine months now. So I got a network technician position right off the bat, which it may be mistitled, but uh, now I'm getting to learn the things that I'm passionate about every single day and I'm getting paid to do it. And that is awesome. My takeaway from all the YouTube videos that I watched about how to get into cybersecurity was basically that you need experience. <laughs> the most valuable thing that you can do to get into cybersecurity is to get experience in cybersecurity. But it's a catch-22, right? So what you can do is you can get experience in a related field. So I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna shoot for you know a five-year experience required job. I'm gonna take whatever I can get and then work my way up from there. So yeah, I'm a network technician. I get to work with all kinds of um, networking equipment. Uh, I work with mostly Windows. Um, and it's really great. It's it's super valuable, and I know that it's getting me closer to my end goal. Now, while I'm at this current job, I haven't obviously given up on my goals. I just know that it's it's a little ways away. So there's little things that I've done, uh, like at the recommendation of Josh Matacor, I started listening to you know CyberWire Daily because even though I only understand half of the things they say on that podcast. I am learning the terminology. I'm learning the way people speak. I'm learning who the thought leaders are, what is important to uh, the industry and you know the, the terminology, the jargon. Uh, and it's like becoming an industry insider. So when I show up to an interview a year or two years down the road 
and they're talking, you know, the lingo, I'm not going to be totally in the dark about what they're talking about. At least I'll have an idea, you know, about what they're talking about. So, so yeah, the little things like that. Um, and of course, you know, when I, when I come home, uh, from work, whenever, I, whenever I do have free time, I like to spend time learning to hack, learning Linux, uh, learning things that I don't get to learn in my current position. Um, I believe my current position is giving me a really good foundation for entering the cybersecurity industry, um, but I also want to get more specific hands-on skills. Uh, you know, I also decided to go to DEF CON, so I'm going to be going to DEF CON 30 uh, in August next month. And, you know, I've never been to DEF CON, and I, I'm not really sure what to expect, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And maybe meet some make some new friends there make some connections you know do some networking and uh just have a great time uh and another thing i wanted to say was you know i've noticed that it's really common for people to complain um uh, about the catch-22 that i mentioned earlier that the requirement for entering cybersecurity is experience in cybersecurity and so it doesn't seem like there's a lot of open positions for level one cybersecurity right however what i've realized um you know is that entry level for cybersecurity does not mean entry level period so entry level for cybersecurity is entry level for cybersecurity but it doesn't mean anybody can just walk in off the street you might have a degree in <clears throat> it or computer science or something related like that they're not just going to give you a position in cybersecurity because you have a degree. Um, now, if you add a little bit of experience to that and some certifications, that that might get you in. But I think people uh, expect to just be handed a job. And I think there's this expectation created because in the, in the cybersecurity space, you hear so much about the excess of job openings and the shortage of cybersecurity professionals um but you know the standards for a cybersecurity professional are quite high so one thing that helped me when i was trying to come to terms with this was in order to work in cybersecurity you need to know you need to already know how things work so you can't expect to defend a network or attack a network if you don't know how networking works if you don't know uh, the basics, you know, then you can't expect to become um, security for a building if you don't know what's inside the building, right? Or where the doors are or how they lock or unlock. It just doesn't work that way. So, you know, I think it, it was it was uh, challenging for me at first, definitely, to come to terms with that. Uh, but since I've come to terms with that, I've sort of changed my plans because, you know, I thought, well, I can be a network technician or a help desk for like two years and then boom, straight into cybersecurity. Um, one to two years max, you know. But I've realized that it, it may take longer than that. And if it does, it does. And I'm not, I'm not upset about that because I'm passionate about all things technology and IT. And yes, cybersecurity is my ultimate goal, but I'm okay with where I'm at right now. And I'm constantly pushing at pushing myself at work and you know telling my boss showing them that I'm hungry asking for more responsibility um, working hard and doing the best that I can and if I have to stay in the IT side of things for three years five years I'm gonna get as far as I can in IT and I'm always gonna be continuously looking for that opportunity to move laterally into cybersecurity and so that's that's my game plan um i'm gonna have my bachelor's degree in uh in computer information technology by december and once i get that i'm gonna go and try to get my um security plus from comptia so you know and then from there i'll just keep moving up and i'll be getting cybersecurity certifications because i want to eventually apply to cybersecurity positions but everything that I see on job postings is way up here and I'm still down here. And, you know, I have to accept that and be okay with that and be willing to move on. I think one thing that's difficult is if you're just looking for a cushy position where you're going to make a lot of money um, and you're expecting for them to just 
uh, welcome you with open arms because you know you have a degree or something that may be pretty disheartening um, when you realize that they actually want you to have experience um, so you know that's something that I'm that I've had to come to terms with is that the requirements are much higher than what we may be led to believe by especially the people who are offering the training and the boot camps and the the career you know paths or whatever they're always gonna be pushing and saying oh it's like there's so many jobs out there you should definitely take our training course and then we're gonna give you a job or you're gonna so easily find a job you'll notice they never actually promise they're gonna get you a job they they just say there's so many out there implying that it'll be really easy to find one but the truth is they're trying to sell their product which is could be a good product but um you know i would say be careful and don't get disillusioned about the possible results so anyway i just wanted to share my journey so far uh from cabinet maker to network technician um, my next goal would be to be a network admin or a junior systems admin and like i said i'm always going to be looking to transition into cybersecurity. i'm always going to be doing those things on the side that are building up my understanding and my experience within cybersecurity. but while that's going on um until I get to that point where I can jump in there, I'm going to go as hard as I can where I'm at and learn everything that I can. So I hope this was encouraging to you or helpful. Um, I know there's a lot of people that uh, think about changing careers into something technology related and they may not feel confident to do it. Uh, I'm almost 30 and I was able to do it. So, you know, if I can do it, you can too. And I would encourage you guys to look at the practical steps that you need to get where you want to go, break it down into small pieces. And then, you know, every day, what can you do? What can you do to get closer to your goal? Um, so yeah, bye.